Hey everyone, welcome to home school. So in this uh, video, we will take up the gymnosperms. In the first uh, part of this particular chapter, that is plant kingdom, we had uh, seen one flow chart where we had classified all the classes actually. So there what we had studied, the gymnosperms and the angiosperms both produce the seeds, but the difference is in case of gymnosperms, the seeds are naked seeds. That is, they doesn't have any covering on the seeds here. Whereas in case of the angiosperms, they also produce the seeds, but the seeds are covered seeds here. All right. So gymnosperms are the, or gymnosporic plants are the one which produces the seeds, but the seeds are naked seeds. That is, they doesn't have any covering on them. Okay. So, if they doesn't have any covering on them, then definitely there is no fruit formation also because we have seen that in the angiosperms, the seeds are usually enclosed in the fruits, isn't it? So in the gymnosperms, if there are no enclosures, if the seeds are naked, then definitely there is no fruit formation, isn't it? So gymnosperms are the plants which produces the seeds. We will write one by one. These are seed producing. These are seed producing plants and they are non-flowering plants. They are non-flowering plants. So why do we call them as non-flowering plants? Because if the fruit has to be formed, then the floral parts only will be turned into a fruit, isn't it? So if there is no fruit formation, then definitely no flower formation also. So the gymnosperms are non-flowering and there is no fruit formation. No fruit formation. Okay, so <clears throat> here... The main plant body is again sporophyte. All right. Like we had seen it in case of the bryophytes, steridophytes and all. So here also in case of the gymnosperms, the main plant body is sporophytic. Main plant body is sporophytic. Yes, sporophytic and this sporophyte is differentiated into root, stem and leaves. So, sporophytic, I'll continue it here only, which is differentiated, which is differentiated into root, stem and leaves. Alright? Root, stem and leaves. So, we will see one by one in this. We will see root, stem and leaves one by one. So, we will we will first uh, take up the stem here. How exactly the stem looks like or what are the characteristics of the stem in case of the gymnosperms. So, in case of gymnosperms, we, we get to see two types of stems here. The stem may be unbranched or the stem may be branched here. So, if we speak about an unbranched stem, alright. So, the stem may be branched or we'll first take up unbranched. The stem can be unbranched or it can be branched also it can be branched also if we are speaking about an unbranched stem so a uh, example for the unbranched stem is cycas unbranched stem is cycas and the branched stem is the example is pinus Pinus tree is an example for branch stem and the cycus tree is an example for the unbranched stem. So, 
how exactly it looks like or what is that unbranching or unbranched stem here so in case of cycas how does the stem look like we just have one stem like this okay we have a stem and we have one central axis to this central axis we usually have the leaves like this so this is the main axis okay this is the main stem axis and this stem axis doesn't have any branches like this okay it doesn't have any branches like this so we call such a arrangement as a unbranched stem and on these we have leaves all over we have leaves all over all over so this is the unbranched stem how about a branched stem like in case of a pinus so here again we have a stem like this okay so after the stem there are branches which can be seen in a acropital manner okay the branches here are in acropital manner i'll write it here it is in acropital order what is the acropital means acropital means the older ones okay the older ones will stay at the bottom and the younger ones or the newer ones will be towards the tip of a plant or tip of a tree so here the older ones are at the bottom which are wide okay which are wide or which are quite big in size so these are the older ones and as in the young ones or the newer ones they produce so they will be usually shorter as compared to the older ones so the short the shorter or the newer or the younger ones will be towards the tip and the older ones will be towards the bottom okay such an arrangement is called as an acropital and it also if you join all this don't it look like a conifer also isn't it so if you join these it also looks like a coni conifer okay so this is called as an acropital arrangement and then they have again branches here and on that we have leaves so this is a example of pinus tree i the unbranched we have the example of the cycas in case of the unbranched fine next moving on to the leaf leaves may be simple or compound leaves and especially in compound they are pinnately compound leaves right leaves are leaves are they can be either simple or they are compound in nature and in case of compound more specifically they are pinnately compound leaves they are pinnately compound leaf what does we mean by that so simple leaf what happens usually let's imagine we have a stem here right and then this is the petiole directly not so long a smaller petiole and then directly we have a leaf like this okay to the stem itself the petiole is attached and then we have a leaf which is directly attached to the stem okay this is called as simple leaf in case of compound what happens in case of compound we have a stem like this all right there is one axis to this main axis we have one more stalk all right we have one more stalk to this stalk to this stalk the petioles are attached and to these petioles the leaves are being attached so in case of the simple leaf there is no cluster of leaves there all right there is no cluster of leaves we have single single leaves which are directly attached to the stem itself so these are called as simple leaf whereas in case of the compound we have a cluster here so we have one more stalk which is coming up so this is the petiole 
this is the petiole and this is the leaf so this is one stalk like structure which is coming and this is the stem here this is the stem and then this is a petiole and this is a leaf so uh, coming to the pinnately compound leaf when when we call it as pinnately is such an arrangement is called as a pinnate here one more type is the palmately compound leaf which is not seen in case of the gymnosperms so how does that look like is palmately is we have so like this so such a arrangement we call it as a palmately compound leaf whereas this arrangement is called as a pinnately compound leaf so the leaves here they are simple or they are pinnately compound leaves and the leaves in the gymnosperms they are very very well adapted to all the extreme climatic conditions they can withstand all the extreme climatic conditions whether it might be temperature it might be humidity or it might be wind or any other external condition the extremities can be very well resisted or very well withstood by the uh members of the gymnosperms all right and usually the uh, leaves are also needle like here so we have written all the uh, like very simple leaves or very sharp leaves here which have a needle ends all right so why exactly is this is because this is to reduce the surface area for the transpiration as well as they have a very thick cuticle okay they have a thick cuticle and the sunken stomata we will write here uh, i'll write it here so in case of the leaves here they can be simple they can be compoundly uh, pinnately compound the leaves and they are very well adapted to they are very well adapted to all the extreme to all the extreme climatic conditions to all the extreme climatic conditions like it might be temperature humidity wind and many others okay so all the external uh, climatic conditions they are being resisted by the members of the gymnosperms and then the leaves usually are needle like surface to reduce the evaporation reduce the evaporation or transpiration or transpiration and then they also have the thick cuticle and sunken stomata they have thick cuticle and sunken stomata thick cuticle and sunken stomata this is also to reduce the water loss to reduce water loss all right so the leaves mainly are simple and they are pinnately compound leaves and they are very well adapted to withstand all the extreme climatic conditions as well as they uh, they usually have the tip or needle like leaves this is mainly to reduce the surface area for the transpiration they also have thick cuticle and sunken stomata this is also an adaptation to reduce the water loss all right so this is about the leaves so now we will see about the root gymnosperms mainly have tap root system all right so what is a tap root system we will first write it they have or they show tap root system so what exactly a tap root system is so in case of tap root so this is the surface this is above the earth surface or above the soil surface and here 
we have one main axis like this all right so this is the main root or this is the primary root we call it as so primary root or the main axis primary root or it is main axis and to these primary roots there are some small outgrowths like this Okay, some small outgrowths are being seen. So, such a root system is called as a tap root system, wherein the main central axis is a bulb-like structure, is a elongated bulb-like structure or a very thick axis. So, such a root system is called as a tap root system. And the gymnosperms, they mainly show the tap root system. And Few roots, however, or few members of the gymnosperms, they also show a fungal association in the form of the mycorrhiza. So, the first variety of the, or, or the first type of the root we, which we can see in the gymnosperm members is the tap root system. So, second one is few members of the gymnosperms show, they, uh, they show a uh, like a system of the symbiosis. We had studied symbiosis in our previous classes. They show fungal association. They show association. So, uh, as in the case of <coughs> as in the case of mycorrhiza. So, mycorrhiza, it is a fungus and a plant association. So, that association we call it as mycorrhiza. Mycorrhiza and the plant here is the pinus. Okay. Or the tree which is involved or the fungal uh, outgrowth or the fungal hyphae is having a symbiotic association with the roots of the pinus and that association we call it as the mycorrhiza. So, mycorrhiza is association of plant plus fungus. Okay. So, which is the plant or a tree here? It is the pinus and the fungal association that is called as the mycorrhiza. And third association which we see here is few members of the gymnosperms, they usually produce the colloidal roots or colloid roots. So, if you see the tree of a cycas, especially, okay, we will write it first. Some show colloid roots. Very, very important. Okay. So, uh, how exactly it is seen is, uh, if you have observed the cycas, in case of cycas, what happens? So, this is the surface, soil surface. So, the roots here are formed in the cluster like this. Okay. They are formed in the clusters. And few, uh, a part of the root system here, they, they show some outgrowths like this. These are also the roots only. So, these outgrowths, what happens is, they sometimes protrude out of the soil and they come up on the soil like this. So, we have a cycas stem like this. But surrounding the stem, beneath, okay, we get to see those outgrowths also. How exactly those outgrowths have come? Those outgrowths, actually, it is here. It is, uh, it is below the soil. But somehow these outgrowths have protruded up on the surface of the soil and a small part of those outgrowths which have protruded out that can be seen above the soil. Okay. So such roots are being called as the coralloid roots. So these are found in the cycas. So what exactly are the coralloid roots? The coralloid roots these are the root uh, or the outgrowths which are usually below the soil only but they protrude above the soil and can be seen on the soil also. So, what is the function of the or why exactly they, the protrusion is seen above the soil is that is mainly because of 
they these corolloid roots help in nitrogen fixing they help in nitrogen fixing okay so mycorrhiza that association can be seen in the pinus and the corolloid roots this can be seen in the cycas okay so we have seen the root stem and the leaves here so these root stem and leaves these are the part of the sporophyte sporophyte is the main plant body in case of the gymnosperms and whatever we have studied till now it is a part of the sporophyte here next moving on to the spores how exactly the spores look like or the spores are being formed spores formed in the gymnosperms are mainly heterosporous all right so spores are mainly heterosporous what is heterosporous we have seen heterosporous and homosporous isn't it so homosporous is same kind of spores are being formed and heterosporous is two different types of spores are being formed so what are the two different types of spores which are formed in case of the gymnosperms is so firstly we have a microspore the first spore is the microspore and the second one is the megaspore microspore and megaspore so these microspore will give rise to a male gamete or male gametophyte and the megaspore will give rise to female gametophyte female gametophyte so uh, we have also seen while seeing the general characteristics there so gym, uh, spores are usually produced within the sporangias okay so within the sporangia structures the spores are being produced and those sporangia are are usually present on the sporophylls which are arranged spirally along the axis to form one particular compact strobili like structure see how exactly it is seen here is so let's imagine we have a structure like this so here we have these structures all right leaf like structures so now the male is usually the male cone or the male strobili see i'll repeat it again where exactly the spores are being produced the spores are produced in the sporangia so spores are produced inside the sporangia and where are the sporangia present sporangia are present on the sporophylls sporophylls and what exactly is the sporophyll see sporophyll is nothing but it is a leaf in which the sporangia is subtended that is called as a sporophyll so here the sporophylls are spirally arranged on the axis so if this is the axis i have not written it, it next to the other see this particular a uh, sporophyll bearing structure or the leaf bearing structure and this leaf bearing structure they are on the they are on the cross side here it means that if you if you see a axis like this if one branch is here if one sporophyll bearing branch is here then the other sporophyll bearing branch will be here all right the next sporophyll bearing branch will be here next here so that next is here it means that it is like spirally arranged if you just see if you just uh, look from the bottom of that particular tree and if you look into it you can see that spiral arrangement of the sporophyll bearing branches okay so likewise 
the male strobili especially the spores are present in the sporangia and those sporangia are born on the or they are being bred on this particular sporophylls which are spirally arranged okay which are spirally arranged to form one compact structure called as the strobili so the strobili or the cones fine so the male cones are usually present at the tips whereas the female cones the female cones are usually present somewhere at the bottoms and we are not writing it here actually that is because most of the time what happens is those female cones will be hanging down due to their weight all right due to their weight they will be hanging down because they will be having a huge mass of mucilage in it so that part we will see a bit later so this this is a male one this is a female cone fine so these structures are called as the strobili or the cones so these strobili bearing uh, or see there are two chances now one is male and female strobili or cones can be present in the same tree also or the male and the female strobili can be present in two different trees also so both are present so both chances are there all right so the strobili which are bearing the male gametes or the microsporophytes micro we we have seen micro is here the male one mega is the female one so strobili which bears the microsporophylls it means that if this is a sporophyll structure this is a sporophyll structure then if the uh, sporophyll is bearing a male cone or a male strobili then such sporophylls are called as the microsporophylls micro sporophylls when it is called as microsporophyll when it is bearing the strobili or the male strobili all right and if it is a microsporophyll definitely it should have a if it is a microsporophyll it should have a microsporangia if it is having microsporangia it should have microspores and if the cone or the strobili is a female cone if it is this kind of cone here then the sporophyll should be the megasporophyll if the sporophyll is megasporophyll then the sporangia should be megasporangia and the spores should be the megaspores here all right so there are chances that we can have the male and female uh, cones both on the same tree or there are chances that the male and the female can be on separate trees also fine so now we will ex we will see how exactly the microsporangias or uh, the megasporangia or microsporophyll and megasporophyll structures will look like so once we see the structure and then we will go to the inner details we will first see the structure of the microsporophyll or a male strobili so how exactly a male strobili looks like is so this is a male strobili all right so this is one oval shaped structure like this so inside which we get to see many these hard scaly structures okay so this is all through and this is like very hard woody structures i can call it as this is hard woody structures all right i am surrounding this we get to see many sporophyll structures actually so if you if you just enlarge one particular sporophyll which is bearing the sporangia here then it looks like it looks like see we have one leaf like structure one leaf like structure here and in and this is one single microsporophyll okay this is one single micro sporophyll so in this one single microsporophyll there are two microsporangias there are two 
microsporangias. The structure is what like this? Okay, so it is again a oval shaped only. So inside every single microspora, microsporophyll, I repeat it again, a microsporophyll is a leaf which is bearing the male sporangia. Okay, the, that is the leaf which is subtending the uh, which is subtending the male cone or the male strobili so that that leaf is called as a microsporophyll. Inside every microsporophyll we have two microsporangia. Inside the microsporangia, alright, inside every microsporangia we have, this is my all spores and these spores are called as the microspore mother cell. Micro spore mother cell. Okay, and this is this is micro sporangia. This is microsporan. This is microsporophyll. Inside that microsporangia, inside the microsporangia, we have a microspor microspore mother cell. So now what happens? So this particular microspore mother cell. Okay, we, I'm, I'm writing the series here. What happens to it? Microspore mother cell. All right. So this particular microspore mother cell will undergo meiosis. This will undergo meiosis and after the meiosis, it forms the microspores. It forms the microspores which are haploid in nature. So these microspores are nothing but pollen grains. They are nothing but Pollen grains. Alright. So these microspore mothers, microspore mother cell will turn to a very confined or very aggregated small cell, which is called as the microspore after the meiosis, and that microspore is nothing but the pollen grain. So this is about the male strobili or the male uh, male uh, Sorry, sorry, the microsporophyll, okay, male strobili, then microsporophyll, microsporangia, microspore mother cell, fine. Next, coming to the female one, this is the male one, coming to the female one, what happens to the female one here is, again, when you look into the megasporophyll, so this is a, let's imagine this is a female strobili. A female strobili. We will take a cross section. Okay, we, when you just see it from one particular side of a cross view, so you can see it like this. So this is one strobili to which, to which uh, the sporophylls. Now, since we are speaking about the female gametophyte here, we have to call them as the megasporophylls. There, in case of the male strobili, we call it as a microsporophyll. Now we have to call it as the Megasporophylls. So we have we get to see some kind of structures like this leaf structures, and these leaf structures are nothing but the mega sporophylls. These are called as mega sporophylls. So if you just take one single mega sporophyll and if you enlarge it, how does that look like? So a mega sporophyll exactly is similar to the, uh, the shape is similar. Right. So we have one. This is the mega sporophyll only. So inside the mega sporophyll we have two uh, mega sporangia like structures or very clearly I can say that we have two ovules there actually. So since we are speaking about the female, we are speaking about the ovule here. So we have again two structures like this. Inside these two structures, we have two ovules attached. We have two ovules attached. 
all right so these two are the ovules and these two ovule this is a this is a megasporophyll and these two are the compact structures which are present in the megasporophylls or can be called as a megasporangia inside these we have ovules this is ovule structure and how exactly the ovule looks here is the ovule is an orthotropous ovule orthotropous ovule all right so what exactly does an orthotropous ovule means orthotropous ovule means it is like an upside down ovule all right so we have ovule which has rotated so it is an upside down ovule is called as orthotropous ovule and how about the integument the speciality of this particular ovule is so this is having single or uni integument uni integument integument is a protective covering around it so while studying the ovules actually or ovary in the next uh, coming chapters so there you will be seeing what exactly is an orthotropous ovule anatropous ovule everything you will be studying in detail now in detail there so here just remember that so the these particular gymnosperms they usually have an orthotropous ovule that is which is upside down with single integument or single protective covering so if we have two integuments we call it as bitegument all right if it is single we call it as a unitegument so here it is a uni or single tegument all right so the ovule is orthotropous so inside this particular um ovule we have all nucellus part here we will write it with different color this is a mass of cell which actually provide the nutrition to the ovule fine so this is the nucellus so what happens let's imagine one cell from the nucellus any any cell from the nucellus okay so out of all these cell let's imagine this cell we are speaking about fine so one cell of the nucellus fine one cell of the nucellus so that will differentiate fine one cell of the nucellus out of that mass of cells one cell of the nucellus will differentiate into megaspore mother cell here we have spoken spoken about the microspore mother cell so this is about the megaspore mother cell so this megaspore mother cell which is usually protected fine this is protected in an envelope it is this particular cell of the nucellus which is differentiated into the megaspore mother cell so this is being protected inside an envelope or a composite structure which is called as the ovule all right so the what is the uh, function of this particular unitegument this layer is called as unitegument fine and this inner part is the nucellus part that one that one particular cell which will differentiate as the megaspore mother cell that is be protected by the envelope or a composite structure which is called as the ovule here all right now this this megaspore mother cell so this will undergo meiosis again this will undergo meiosis and it forms four megaspores it forms spores four, uh, four megaspores and among these four megaspores three will degenerate all right among the four three will degenerate and one develops into a female gametophyte among the four three degenerates three will degenerate and one will develop into a female gamete fight all right so speaking about the male and female strobili here so this is the male strobili that is 
the leaves which have subtended the or which have subtended the males uh, sporangia are called as the microsporophylls wherever the structure micro comes it is that it means that we are speaking about the male sex organ or the male gametophyte produ producing organ and wherever the mega comes here we are speaking about the female organ fine so it is uh, this is one strobili that's a male strobili and now so if you just take up one single sporophyll a microsporophyll then inside one microsporophyll we have two microsporangia inside the microsporangia we have microspore mother cell so those microspore mother cell will undergo meiosis to form the microspores which are haploid in nature so see if it is if it is undergoing meiosis then definitely microspore mother cell should be deployed in nature all right microspore mother cell is deployed in nature that will undergo meiosis or the reductional cell division to form the pollen grains or the microspores and then moving on to the female part so again this is one strobili which is subtended by the leaves here so these leaves are called as the sporophylls the leaves which subtends the sporangia are called as sporophylls so since they are uh, they are subtending the female strobili here it is called as the megasporophyll again inside the megasporophyll one single megasporophyll we have two compartments inside every compartment we have a compact structure called as ovule inside the ovule we have nucellus part that nucellus is providing the nutrition to the whole ovule structure there and later on one cell out of all the cells of the nucelli this is this is multicellular right so one cell out of the nucellus will develop into a megaspore mother cell and that megaspore mother cell is in turn protected by single integument whether it is the unitegument all right so this is about the microspore formation and the megaspore formation so in the next part we will see about the other details or the next part of this particular spores or how exactly the main plant body is formed as well as the economic importance okay so we will stop the class by this and i'll meet you again in the next class so subscribe the channel and share the videos